It's so much more than the file browser. Any filmmaker, anyone working in post-production will find it helpful. Hey, my name is Piotr Stoczyński and Cut to the Point channel is all about mastering film editing and about streamlining the editing process so you know what's the point of every cut you make in the story you want to tell. Let's play a little game. I will describe a few scenarios that are pretty common in our industry and I want you to imagine the steps you would take to accomplish the tasks. Ready? Try to find the slow-mo footage you've shot in 2018. All of it. How quickly would you be able to do it? What if it's red footage and you just can't preview the file in the browser or a simple player? How comfortable do you feel about it? Is it possible to find any file you want, no matter what format it's in, in less than a minute? Or let me ask you another question. A director or producer is looking from behind you at the screen and asks you to offload the files from the card and preview them with a specific LUT applied and they want you to play it back in a specific frame rate. How do you do it? And how long will they have to wait? You probably thought something like, after I would copy the footage, I would import it into my editing software and then I would... And here goes the list of all the steps you would take in your MLE software. Or yet another one. You need to find the best clips of a... Just insert anything that would work for you here. A goat, I don't know, a giraffe, whatever. That was shot a long time ago. How would you do it? How would you search for it? The tool we'll talk about is kind of from Les Payne Software. By the way, nice name for a company. It's all in one media management app. But in fact, it's not only that. It has some really powerful features and it's used by professionals as media storage browser, file organizer, universal player, login and metadata editing tool, multi-purpose production assistant and converter. I would say that it's an app for anything you might want to do with your footage before you start editing on the timeline. This is, in my opinion, eye-opening piece of software, especially if you produce a lot of content. So this is first out of three videos when I will go in details about Kino. And I will show you the best features and applications that make this program so powerful and so unique. In the second video, which I will upload in a few weeks, we'll talk about powerful converting features. And in the third one, we'll talk about subclips, markers, and integrations between Kino and applications like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Frame.io, etc. To be clear, this video is not sponsored, but I did receive a copy for a review. Still, I didn't promise them anything. And the fact that I'm doing three videos about it is only based on the fact that I do enjoy using it, and I'm pretty convinced that you will like it too. For less pain software, I could probably write a simple blog post about it and call it a day. Also, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for my viewers, so by the end of the video I will tell you how to get 20% off any license. I'll be working on Kino 1.6, the most recent version as I record this video. Let's get started. We can apply and edit metadata in Kino and what I love about it is that it's not a messy list of metadata I don't actually need and use. Instead, we have the most important information for the filmmakers, like title, description, reel, scene, angle, etc. We can batch edit any field for any number of clips, which is also very useful. We can export, import and merge metadata information and exchange it with people working on another copy of the footage. We can rate clips, like rating pictures in Lightroom. I've always loved to do it and I always wanted an app for filmmakers that could do it. Now we have it. So as with pictures, I will go through the clips, keeping my hand on the numeric keyboard and rating them. And another feature you may know from Lightroom are tags. As far as I know, Final Cut Pro uses tags, but we'll talk about integrations in the future video. Basically, tags help us organize and describe clips so we can easily identify them in the future. Drill down is like a signature mark of Kino. A feature so simple and so useful at the same time. It will display all clips within a selected location, drilling down to the smallest subfolder you can find. You can even select any disk and activate the drill down. We do it with this icon over here or with a keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus Shift plus D or Command Shift plus D on the Mac. Imagine how useful it can be if you don't know where the clip is, you just know that it's on that disk. 
Another example, I hate how Sony cameras organize media. There is a bunch of empty folders there and I always forget which one contains actual clips. With drill down, you just select the top level folder to access all of the files. So useful. By the way, Kino can be used for managing pictures as well. Basically, it's like a library tab in Lightroom. Another one, we can create our own workspace with folders we want to access quickly and easily. Tags, ratings, metadata, all of them allow us to search for specific clips. So let's have a look at filtering features of Kino and let's go back to the example of finding slow-mo footage from the previous year. Specifically, I will look for footage with a frame rate of 100 FPS. So I select the high-level folder or disk where I know the clip is buried in and then I choose filtering by frame rate. Specify the query and after a moment you've got the results. Another example, let's find clips I gave 5 star rating to that has Samsung in name. By the way, the text we type into search field also looks into markers and subclips descriptions, so really if you spend some time to log your footage you can find anything in seconds. We'll come back to subclips and markers in the third video of the series. And in the next version we'll be able to filter through VFR clips, which pretty often are very troublesome. So once you find VFR clips, you can convert them to a constant frame rate before importing in your NLE. At least this is the practice I recommend. It's actually one of the best practices I talk about in my ebook. Kino can be used as a professional video player. It supports most professional formats, including RED files in Kino Premium. I am almost sure it will support Blackmagic RAW soon as well. At least that's what I'm hoping for, because recently I've bought Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So we can expect some new style shots and videos coming later this year. But this is only a tip of the iceberg when it comes to possibilities of this player. First of all, we can specify the speed setting we want to apply to a clip in the player. So we can watch it in slow motion or speed it up. But I can also choose a specific frame rate I want to play the clip in. So it's like footage interpretation on the go. For example, if I have 100 FPS clip and I want to see how it will look like when played back in 24 FPS, I can do it in a second. How cool is that? And some additional features of this player include adding in and out points, enabling zebra for overexposed areas, widescreen overlay and playback loop. We can also rotate and flip a clip in a view and we can apply LUTs within a player. So once again there is no need to import clips into your NLE to perform such operations. The director or producer will be impressed and probably you're gonna get a question, what software do you use to do that? What is more, you actually don't need to enter the player to apply the LUT. You can do it in any view in Kino and it will affect the thumbnail as well. We can actually apply two LUTs to the same clip because we have a camera LUT and a creative LUT at our disposal. And obviously in preferences we can add our own LUT folders as well and we can use the ones we already have in DaVinci Resolve. When we are in detailed view of a clip, we can open this content tab. Kino will generate a preview of 36 frames throughout the duration of that clip, so we can have a pretty good idea what that clip is about. For example, here I have an unboxing footage and even though it's quite long, I can easily see an overview of the content in it. How cool is that? If you have a multi-channel audio clip, you can choose which channel to listen to within Kino. I can activate only one channel or a few to listen to. Have you ever had that problem when you wanted to get rid of unwanted audio channels and you wanted to interpret the footage, but first you actually needed to drop the clip on the timeline to preview the channels? Now you can do it before even importing the clips into NLE of your choice. Notice that I talk about any editing software. Kino will blend in your workflow, either you work on Premiere, Final Cut Pro or Resolve. Once again more about it in the third video of that series. Kino has infinite possibilities when it comes to renaming. Not only we can create our own naming conventions, but we can also use metadata from Kino to create them. Let's try to use a custom text and some metadata information to generate new descriptive file names. First I select the clips I want to rename and now I hit F2 on the keyboard or just right click and choose rename. Batch rename window appear and we start by selecting the directory for renamed files. And the thing we're most interested in is file name pattern. 
At the bottom of the list, we have Manage option, which gives us the endless possibilities. I will duplicate an existing preset and will modify variables. Let's create a name pattern that uses custom name of a project called Vineyard, followed by dash, followed by title from metadata, another dash and frame rate of a clip. Now we save these settings for a future and we click on start renaming. A moment later, we have nice and descriptive names. We can modify it even further by opening more options. We can also run batch renaming when pasting clips to any folder by choosing paste and rename feature. Kino also has offloading feature, which basically means that Kino will verify camera media when copying them to a new location. All files will be copied and verified with the source, so we can sleep like a baby at night. At least my baby, my children, because they sleep really well at night. So. I can't complain. There are dedicated programs for offloading like Red Giant's Shooter Offload or Hatch, but they cost almost as much as Kino and don't offer much more. And with Kino we get offloading as a part of a package. In a standard license you can run a verified copy to only one location, but in Kino Premium you can specify up to four destinations at the same time. Usually red footage is hard to play back smoothly, but Kino seems to deal with raw R3D files exceptionally well. To help it we can choose the resolution and of course all of the other features of the player are still available. It even reads the sidecar for R3D files, so if you make any changes in Red Cine X Pro, it will be shown in Kino as well. It's possible because Kino uses indexing instead of databases, like for example Lightroom. Why is it important? If you've ever used Lightroom, you know that you need to import files into it. Also, if you use a connection to database, you're in serious trouble. So in my opinion, for filmmakers, indexing approach is much better. This is especially important if you're working on shared storage solution, because you don't need separate databases for each connected machine. So Kino works really well in this scenario, for example, if you use a jellyfish with your team. Patrick from LumaForge confirms that, and as a matter of fact, they use Kino as their media management app as well. Bear in mind though that Red support is just available in Kino Premium. Another Kino Premium feature are metadata logging presets for appending information to clips. Obviously we can batch assign these metadata presets and there is even a very cool feature that allows you to pre-assign metadata preset to SD card before the shoot. So after the shooting day you offload the footage from the card and you've got tags and other information already in place. If you're a cameraman working for numerous clients, you will love reports. Probably producers will love it as well for keeping an eye on production assets. To generate a report, you select the footage folder you're interested in and choose Create Report. In a blink of an eye, you have all data about assets at your hand. Information like total media duration in the folder, average duration of a clip, number of markers and subclips, once again more on that in the future video, video codecs and formats, total and average size of clips, number of items and more. If you've ever dealt with an offset in one of camera's time recording data, you will love the fact that Kino lets you batch correct incorrect camera time information. Simply select the clips in a question, right click and choose correct recording time. As I already mentioned, Kino works really well for shared storage solutions. In preferences, you can define location for metadata as well as shared cache folder. So really there is nothing holding you back from creating an ultimate database of your video assets. I also need to mention a keyboard shortcut for a full screen player. It's the same as in DaVinci Resolve that is Ctrl plus F. I wish there was something like a keyboard mapper in Kino, so we could add our own shortcuts and modify the existing ones. The next thing you need to learn are transcoding features and effects that are built into Kino. I will display the link in a moment, but first let's address that 20% off coupon code as I promised at the beginning. First of all, you can download a free 30 day trial before you decide if that's the right tool for you. Just go to cuttothepoint.com forward slash Kino and try it for yourself. And if you feel it is right tool for you, just use the coupon code CTTP20 to get 20% off any license. 
The coupon code will be valid for only two weeks after I upload this video. If you missed the deadline, I will put the link to my mailing list in the description and if you use this link to sign up, I will let you know when they offer a discount again. By the way, this is one-time payment like in all the days, not another subscription. And you get one year of free updates. And you may have it installed on three different computers, which is awesome as well. For a full disclosure, if you use a link in the description to buy it, I will get a small commission at no additional cost to you and it just helps me to create the content for you guys. Now click here to watch the second part about transcoding features of Kino. It was Peter until the next time shoot and daddy like there is no tomorrow.